In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started with Open Web UI, which is a versatile, feature-rich, self-hosted web UI for large language models. With Open UI, you can use your Olama models, or you can also interact with OpenAI compatible models. And what's great about this project is it's all set up to be deployed, but you can either choose the route of going with Docker, or you can go the route of deploying this on Kubernetes if you'd like. It has support for both CPU as well as GPU, depending on the hardware that you have. You can also separate your hardware and the web UI itself. Let's say you have your GPU hosted somewhere else and you want to interact with that endpoint, you'll be able to do that as well. So first I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of the platform itself. Then I'm going to dive in and show you how to get set up from scratch. So just to give you an idea, as soon as you install this, you'll be able to see all of your local models. So if you have Olama running, all your models will automatically pre-populate within the drop down here. As you see, I have Llama 3 selected, and if I just go tell me a joke back, and then we also have our chat history on the left-hand side here. And then in addition to that, you have all these different features. If you want to edit the text, if you want to copy it, if you want to have it read aloud, you can do that. But you'll be able to get up and running really quickly. And I think this is going to be a really great option for a ton of people that are interested in using local models some other options here it will give you the generation information so how long it took to generate how many tokens was used you can say whether it's a good or bad response and then you can either click continue or regenerate the response that's a little bit about the interface itself the other nice thing is out of the box you have the ability to upload files say you want to upload a pdf or an html file or whatever it might be you can go ahead and throw that in there as well you can also record your voice so if i just say hello world and then I submit that, you can get a response that way. And then there's a ton of little subtle things that are built within this. Toggle the bar back and forth, just like you would something like ChatGPT. If you wanna make a new chat, you can just click that button. But the thing that I think is a really nice feature is I like having the ability to swap out between both my local models and then also try something at an endpoint potentially. Say if I wanna just try something out with GPT 3.5 Turbo and I just say, hello world. What you'll be able to do is if you put in your API key from whether it's OpenAI or Grok, you'll be able to interact with those models directly all within this platform that you have, whether it's locally or deployed on your own hardware. So what's nice with this is you have the option to configure with any API that's OpenAI compatible. If you just want to add a new Llama model, so if you saw on Twitter, hey, we released the new Llama model, you can just go in here, you can put in the model string and it will begin to download it for you. So a really nice feature to have that all built in there. You can add a tag here, which it will put in this left-hand corner here, just like you see options. You also have the ability to download the chat, whether it's with a JSON, text, or PDF format. So just to go into a handful of more things before I show you how to get set up, if you check out the settings here, within the settings, you do have the ability to set the system prompt. You also have some advanced parameters here if you want to play around with the seed or the top K values or a number of different values that you can go ahead and tweak. You also have the ability to set up an OpenAI compatible endpoint. If you want to swap this out to Grok, you can put in Grok's endpoint here and put in your Grok API key. And then we also have our Olama API. So in this instance, I'm running it within Docker and there's instructions on how to set this up depending on where you have your Olama models running as well. You can also tweak the interface a little bit. So if you want to change the default prompt suggestions, you can do that. And there's even experimental features for the memory feature, just like OpenAI has within ChatGPT, where it will choose to remember certain aspects and do a reg process on the back end to bring them in to certain conversations if it sees fit. You can play around with that feature as well in here. You also have the ability to change out the text to speech engine. So in here we have the web API. You can also set it for OpenAI if you'd like. And then in terms of the speech to text, you can also do this through the web API or you can do it locally if you'd like. Now, the other thing that I really like about this is it gives you the ability where you can upload images as well. If you're using a model that does support images, which I'll demonstrate in just a moment here, you'll be able to incorporate that. And say if you want to use one of the lava models, you'll be able to do that as well. Just a couple other things. You can export your chat history, your account, and all of that here as well. The other thing with Open Web UI is it doesn't necessarily need to just be locally running on your machine. If you deploy it on your own infrastructure, you can add in your own users within this. In my case here that I'm the admin, but say if you want to add other users, you can do that as well. And you can just walk through the prompts to do that. I just wanted to quickly show you one of the image models. I have a lava running here locally. Upload a file here and I say, what is this image? 
this is a relatively small image model. And there you have it. I have this lava model running locally. It's able to tell what that image is, all without actually using any inference and incurring any cost. First thing, if you select a model that does have the vision capabilities, you can upload a file just like that. And then you can also use something like GPT-4 Omni models. Now within the workspace here, you have all the different models that you have loaded up, whether it's locally within Olama or the models on if you plugged in OpenAI or another vendor. There's also an area within here where you can store different prompts. You can look at the community of the different contributors out there that are submitting these different prompts. You can search for specific prompts or you can just look at specific examples. So anyone that's interested in prompt engineering and that type of stuff, you'll be able to find some really good templates within this. And then the nice thing with the prompts, with how they're set up, is you'll be able to access these prompts right within the chat, which I'll show you in just a moment. Then there is also a document feature, so you can upload documents within here. If you want to ask questions of particular documents, you can throw in different documents within this section as well. And then similarly for the documents, you'll also be able to access them within the chat with a simple command. There's also a playground as you might expect. So if I just go back to chat here, to access your prompt templates, you can just click that forward slash. And then to access your documents, you can click the Octothorpe. You can ask a question of all your documents, or you can select the particular document that you want to interact with. To get set up, there's going to be some prerequisites on your end. You're going to have to install Docker. You can just go ahead and search to download Docker on the docker.com website. And then you'll also have to download Olama. Now, if you don't want to use this for Olama, you can use this if you want to use it just as an interface to interact with, whether it's the OpenAI API or the Croc API as well. Depending on how you have it set up, you can also even download it from a zip file if you like. So once we grab this, we can go over to an empty directory here. So if I just list it out, we see that it's empty and then we can clone the repository. So while that's pulling it down everything that we need, we're just going to scroll down here to the Docker instruction. Depending on your setup, just make sure to grab the proper Docker command for what you're trying to accomplish. In this case, we're going to be using Hulama on our computer. I'm just going to copy the string here. All right, so now that it's all downloaded, what we're going to do is we're just going to CD into our directory here. What to do is paste in that command, but you have to make sure that you actually do have Docker running. If you've downloaded Docker, just make sure that you actually have that running. And also make sure if you're going to be using Olama, that you have Olama running as well. You can just run that command. It might take a couple minutes just to run through everything. Once it's set up, you can head over to localhost 3000 and you'll be able to interact with that. It's really nice that it has a Docker container where you could just go ahead and deploy this to an instance if you like. You can run it locally just like I'd shown you. But that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next time.